What's going on guys, Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new discussion video where we're going to be talking about my top 5 favorite decks to play for the month of November slash December. Um, I've uh, had quite the switch up in decks that I've been interested in as opposed to the last time I made this video which was back in September. Um, but today I'm going to try to make this video as quick and as informative as I can and I'll throw in some other honorable mentions of decks that I would like to play that I think are great decks to play this format uh, that I don't currently own or haven't mentioned. So I'll make sure to throw that in towards the end of the video. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started and uh, also a reminder to check out our sponsors for the channel if you want to help support me and the channel. Uh, there are ways to do so if you're buying anything off Imperium Duelist, if you're looking for amazing playmats, sleeves, dice, etc. Uh, check out their website down in the description below and there's a discount code which is WINNERKILLS10 OFF. You can use that at checkout to save 10% off your entire order. And if you're buying anything on TCG Player, it might be one of these decks uh, or any of the singles that go with the decks. Um, or a sealed product, you can use my affiliate link down in the description below to help support me and the channel because anytime you use that link and check out with it, I will receive a small portion of the revenue from that purchase. So feel free to use that if you're buying anything off of TCP Player. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started and uh, we'll start with uh, number five for the top five. So coming in at number five, I have Pure Mech Knights and uh, this deck is still one of my all-time favorites to this day. And I know in the previous version of this video that I made back in September, I believe I had Pure Mech Knights at number one, uh, and that's just because I was having tons of fun with, uh, you know, with the deck and having a lot of competitive success as well, um, because the deck is very powerful, and uh, luckily people were starting to realize that with all the competitive success it was having through uh, Mr. Shannon Long, who's been so successful with this deck and has brought it into the competitive scene and really shined the light on it to show people what it's capable of in the right hands. Um, but the reason I put it at number 5 this month is strictly because I just haven't been playing it as much. Um, not to say that I still, uh, you know, don't love the deck, because um, I do. Uh, i just been experimenting with other options and other decks because I kind of did burn myself out on it a little bit. Um, but it is still, nonetheless, a very great competitive strategy. And I would, within an instant, immediately fall back into it uh, to uh, play in competitive or casual play. Um, because it's an absolutely amazing deck overall. And uh, as far as budget is concerned, it's a relatively cheap deck overall, I feel like. All the Mech Knights are not too expensive, and a lot of the other stable cards that go in the deck have either had reprints or aren't that expensive to begin with. So, overall, a very fun and competitively viable deck that you can play right now in this format. Mech Knights are also an extremely unique type of deck when it comes to their strategy based around establishing columns on the field uh, between yours and your opponent's field. Uh, which is so, a mechanic we really haven't seen taken advantage of by any other archetype. So really a unique archetype and the artwork in of itself is just outright beautiful. So coming in at number four, I have the Marincess deck. And uh, the reason I don't place this deck higher this month is strictly because uh, it is a bit of an arbitrary deck to play with sort of linear combos and ends on the same field often and has one very big flaw to it. It is extremely reliant on the field spell and it falls victim to Nibiru extremely hard, unlike other decks do at the moment. Some decks have really good ways of recovering, but Marincess, uh, if interrupted with a card like Nibiru, really don't have a chance to come back. Um, but the reason I place this deck higher than Mech Knight is because it's a little bit more refreshing as an archetype to play, simply because it is newer, with uh, most of its amazing support cards coming out in the most recent set, Chaos Impact. Uh, and it is a very fun deck to play, it's water-themed, uh, and of course, uh, it would be near and dear to me because one of my favorite decks of all time is Mermail, which is a water deck. Um, and uh, one downside of this deck, I would also say, is it does require the use of Cyanet Mining, which is in a very uh, expensive card, uh, which is also confirmed to be reprinted in Dual Overload, but that is in quite uh, a few months from now. Um, so it won't be going down in price anytime soon. But again, it is a very fun strategy to play nonetheless, I can't deny that. Um, and um, it's still giving me a lot of curiosity to play uh, because I feel like there's so many different things I want to try with this deck. Um, some things I've been trying on my stream like the uh, Tenyi Water Monster, uh, playing an Artifact Engine. There's tons of things you can do with this deck with playing the Frog Engine, playing Paleo Cards, playing Trap Heavy, Sky Striker versions. There's a lot of utility you can do with this deck. That's why I place it slightly higher than Mech Knight for this format. Um, but nonetheless, still a very fun deck, uh, still very much competitively viable in the right circumstances. Um, does it have its flaws? Absolutely. Uh, but nonetheless, I can easily put it at number four for this format 
uh, for those reasons. So coming in at number three, I have the Mermel deck, and the reason why I put this deck on the list this month and didn't the previous time I made this video is because I was just too focused on going first with Mermel, and that just was not the way to go, especially if you weren't playing an Orcus variant, which I just had no interest in doing so, uh, because it just didn't feel that original, and it felt like I was just playing a worse version of Orcus just because I was trying to mix two archetypes together that I feel as though don't have a lot of synergy. I mean, hell, the best cards in your deck require you to discard water monsters, uh, and the Orcus monsters are not that. Uh, so in my head it just clicks as you know not really having any synergy with this format I've looked to the deck again and tried to switch things up after a break of not playing it And uh, I decided that you know getting back to the decks roots once again and trying just to go second and break fields um, You know like there's no tomorrow has been a lot of fun and been relatively refreshing main decking cards like Phantasme Gamma seal mind control etc etc and breaking away from Sekka's light uh, as a deck building choice it just made the deck sort of uh, an eye opener and now has a bit better of a thunder dragon matchup thanks to some of the changes i've made to the list overall because in previous uh, formats that's been this deck's bane of its existence is thunder dragons because uh, colossus pretty much just makes it so you cannot play the game whatsoever so you definitely need cards like gamma seal and mind control to help fix that problem um, the deck is relatively budget friendly uh, when regarding uh, the core itself, the Mermel Atlantean core, it's not that expensive and could be probably picked up for well under $100 or around the $100 mark. But if you want to play it competitively, unfortunately, it does require the investment of cards like Phantasme, as well as perhaps some other hand traps or a card like Pot of Extravagance as well, if you really want to take it to that high top tier competitive level. But I easily have to put this deck at number three on the list for this month. Now, coming in at number two for this month, the deck that wasn't on the list, I think, uh, maybe at all this year, maybe one video uh, that I did for this way earlier in the year, and that is Shadal. Now, I put Shadal on this list for a few reasons. Um, I've just been having a ton of fun getting back to playing a deck that used to be extremely good and uh, is looking like it's going to be getting a bit better now with the Shadal Structure deck that we have coming out in Valentine's Day in 2020. Uh, that is going to be giving this deck a ton of amazing support. And I'm actually going to be making a separate video reviewing all the new Shadal cards we've gotten so far. Because I think they're absolutely fantastic and I feel like a lot of people are, are missing the point of these cards and how good they actually are. But nonetheless, Shadal is an extremely fun uh, fusion based deck that has the ability to still take out some of the most powerful decks of this format. I mean, Shadal Wind is an amazing card, and so is this card. Now that it's back at three, with more support on the way, I mean, the sky is seemingly the limit with how powerful this deck can be. All the main deck Shadal monsters are amazing cards, Beast, Dragon, Falco, Squamata, tons of graveyard utility with this deck. So many different engines you can play from the Light Sworn engine to the Perform Age engine. Uh, playing uh, interesting tech choices like Thousand Blades uh, and main decking cards like Super Polymerization give this deck a huge heads up in this format and allow them to be extremely viable. And of course, I can only imagine with the structure deck on the way, this deck will become even more of a budget option than it already is with amazing reprints of cards like Construct and Winda and possibly other cards as well. So definitely have to put Shadals on this list uh, and who knows, they might even move to number one as we move into early next year with that new support from the structure deck. And coming in at number one is a deck that I had on the list last time I made this video and uh, I'm bumping it up to number one now and that is Block Dragon Burning Abyss. This deck has just been absolutely amazing to play. Uh, it has such a powerful first turn feel that it can end on. Uh, an example would be Block Dragon, Avermax, Fossil Dyna, Nat B, Saryuja as an ending board going first, which honestly most decks this format cannot even touch a field like that. Yes, it is vulnerable to cards like Nibiru, but most cases when you do get Nibiru playing a deck like this, your opponent is A, not going to know when to properly Nibiru, and B, if they do Nibiru you, you often have a good recovery option because this card, Block Dragon, is absolutely insane. It's a dragon ruler on steroids in my opinion. And of course, I get to play one of my favorite engines of all time, the Burning Abyss engine in this deck, playing cards like Cherubini and Dante and Beatrice. It's just a lot of fun to play a cer certain like turbo combo oriented deck that can end on an extremely powerful field, playing one of my favorite engines of all time, and also playing this card, which is just inherently amazing. Um, the deck is also relatively cheap to pick up as well, 
Uh, a lot of the main deck cards can be picked up for next to nothing. The only expensive cards I feel like you might have to buy are in the extra deck, but even those have been reprinted a lot in recent months. Avermax, I feel like, might be the most expensive card, maybe next to Boral Sword, which isn't necessary to play. I guess Appalooza could be played in the extra deck too, but isn't mandatory for sure. But Block Dragon BA is a deck that I'm putting a lot of effort into lately to try to innovate and help make... Um, as best of a competitive deck out of it as I can as I might take it to an event in the future in the near near future um, and having tons of fun playing it in the process play testing etc etc amazing deck have to put it on the list at number one uh, absolutely and like I said at the beginning of the video I'll go ahead and make a few honorable mentions for this month for me I'd have to put Salmon Great on the list as well as an honorable mention because Salmon Great is a deck that I feel like even with the hits it's had it's still an amazing deck and with Pyro Phoenix coming out as a really new amazing boss monster that I feel like a lot of people aren't taking advantage of and I guess it's not the most competitively viable card, but it is an amazing card nonetheless. Another deck I'd have to say is Orcus because, well, I can't deny it is an amazing meta deck and it is a relatively cheap strategy and not that hard to grasp the overall concept. And if you want to get into the competitive scene right away, I feel like that's a deck to go to because you do have some time to play it before the Forbidden and Limited list comes out in January and uh, should be able to pick up the deck relatively quickly. And the last deck I want to put on this list is Cyber Dragon. It's a deck I've always wanted to pick up, but just haven't had the time to do it, and I still feel like even after Mermaid being banned, is still an incredible deck going first or second because of the defensive boards it can put up using cards like Cyber Dragon Overflow, or Cybernetic Overflow, and, uh, you know, Cyber Dragon Infinity. Just amazing cards, and going second, the, uh, you know, contact fusion mechanic that the deck can abuse with Mega Fleet is just mind-bogglingly insane so that's gonna do it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed uh let me know what you think down in the description below what are your favorite decks to play this month i would love to hear what you guys have to say join discord and go ahead and follow me on twitch as well if you haven't already and as always guys winter kill signing out we'll see you guys in the next one